In this episode, we'll replace the regulator cable and the stop cable of a Yanmar Marine diesel in a sailboat. This is um, what you'd normally call a throttle cable in a gasoline engine. It's the, called the regulator cable in a diesel. And I want you to look at the routing of that cable. <clears throat> now that um, black hose that's right there <clears throat> is the saltwater intake. And if you look at the, the cables on the inside of that saltwater intake hose, I'm going to theorize that that cable should have been on the outside of the saltwater intake hose and that the last guy to change that hose made the mistake, the critical error, of putting it on the wrong side. I'm going to show you another view of it. This is the uh, cable that we're looking at and we've traced it along. The overheated cable is right here and there's that hose that's on the wrong side. And if we look back and say, well, what is it that that overheated that cable? What's this device? This is the exhaust manifold right there as it comes up into the exhaust elbow. And so that's deadly hot. And when you push that cable up against there, it overheats and melts. You get a better view of it when we get it out. So I've threaded in the new cable. It appears to be the correct length and it seems right on both ends. Now I'm going to take off this little um, pin, a little cotter pin there. This slides out. Don't lose the washer. Let's undo these two Phillips head screws so we get more latitude to undo this correctly. When you think about how a cable works, you have to remember that the outer uh, shell, the cable, has to remain stationary while the inner core moves. And to hold the outer core stationary, there's a little rib there that dovetails with uh, the edge of the uh, cable so that the outer cable can't move. This is the gear shift end, and the cable that we're concerned about is the red one, and it goes through here and ends at the top. And if you look closely, there's a little snap ring. We're just going to pry that off with a little pocket screwdriver. The trick is going to be not to lose it. Okay, that thing is off, and now down here, there's a wire staple. I'm going to pry that staple out so that the proximal connection is loosened so we can take the whole, slide the whole cable out. Here's the staple that was holding it in place. And this is what it looks like now. So the staple rides in that groove there. Um, we've got to get one of these ends off to be able to get it off. I'm going to put a wrench on there and see if I can spin that top part off. Now with the end off, I should be able to just pull the whole thing out and then put in the new cable. Now I've got the cable completely out. I need to swap over the hardware and this little brass connector piece needs to come. And if you look closely, you'll see there's a little snap ring right there. And uh, ideally I'd like to clean this all up, but I didn't bring my snap ring pliers today and working on a boat, you always forget to bring a tool. But right now, um, all I really need to do is I need to get this off. And so I'm gonna put um, my crescent wrench on here I'm going to have to put down the camera, but put a second wrench on here and we'll see if we can spin that off. And this actually came off quite easily. And the whole thing spins off. So we'll clean this up a little bit as much as I can here on the boat and then swap it over to the new cable. There it is there. I hope that's focused for you. I'll spin the new one onto the old piece. Of course, one of the things that always goes through one's mind is the question as to what you're going to do to try and prevent it from happening again. And in addition to positioning it properly, I'm going to use this uh, fire resistant pad. This is a pad that I used for uh, plumbing when uh, soldering copper pipe around joists. And you just press up against the joist, and the heat from the soldering, soldering um, gas doesn't uh, burn the joist. So it's plenty heat resistant. I'm going to cut an inch off of it here, wrap it around the uh, area of the cable that's uh, closest to the exhaust manifold and I'll wire that on with some stainless steel wire. Now it turns out this little shoulder is not compatible with the transmission handle so we're going to take it off and slide in like this. We got the snap ring back on. 
And now I want to thread this little metal staple back in. All right, now we um, the cable's in place, but we need to do some fine tuning, as evidenced by the fact that this idle screw is not touching the lever. Do you see that? So when the lever is fully extended, it's there's still about a two millimeter gap between the idle screw adjustment and the lever. And so what that's telling me is that our cable is just a little bit too short. I'm going to take this part off, unscrew it a few turns, and get that so that it sits properly on, against the idle screw adjustment. Now if you look closely you'll notice that there are two spots for that staple to go and that's to allow for variance between the new and the old cable. As it turned out my new cable was slightly different compared to the old and it actually fit a little bit better with the staple in the top slot and so I switched that to allow for a better fit between the two ends. Now you might think the best way to turn off these engines would be to turn off the key and you'd be wrong. Um, in point of fact, these engines will chug right along even with key off. That's not very good for the electronics. Instead, to turn off these engines, we pull on the stop cable, which is attached to the stop lever, cutting off fuel. That's the cable we're going to replace today. This is the old stop cable. I've already removed it. You can see the plastic shoulder that holds it firm in the cockpit has snapped right off. Now here's a little tip. One of the things that's sometimes useful, and not always, but sometimes, is to use a tracer line. That's what this little piece of string is here. And the idea is you uh, take this piece of string and you tie it to the end of the old cable. When you pull the old cable out, it gives you a record of the exact routing of that cable. Not only that, but if it's a tricky access point where it's difficult to thread through, it's a lot easier to pull a cable than it is to push it. And so by having a tracer line, if you decide to use it, you can tie the end of the new cable onto it and pull it back, and um, the cable exactly reproduces the configuration that you had. This is the new cable here, and just to let you know how it goes together, we're going to take this nut completely off the entire cable, and then we're going to slide the cable through the cockpit access hole right there, which is about that diameter, just the um, thin diameter. And then from the uh, engine, we're going to slide the nut back on and then thread it on and tighten it into place. Once you get it into place, you tighten it up from behind, but sometimes it's better to leave the final adjustments to the end because it's easier to manipulate the whole cable into place if it's loose on both ends. Now at the other end near the engine, it's a little bit hard for me to show you this, but I'm gonna, I've am gonna slid one nut on. I'll slide on the lock washer and a second nut. And of course this will depend a little bit on your system, but this is what it is for the Yanmar. And uh, we adjust the length um, afterwards. Now the next part, we we'll just slide the cable through that little hole right there. And then there's a little notch in the back and you can see those two nuts go over that notch and then they tighten down when we have the right length. Well it's an irony of life that sometimes the simplest things are the most important and the ones that are most critical when you get things wrong. At the end of it all you need to zip tie your cables into place and make sure they're not up against anything that will burn them or damage them or cause electrical shorts. Say, uh, if this video helped you out and you want to see more of them, then hit like or subscribe or leave a comment. I'd love to hear what others say. Thanks for watching.